Ralph, good good to see oh, you. Good to see you as well. Even and if this is an extraordinary way for us to do it. it it's a peculiar and I'm I'm really uh, what's the word this dysfunction this 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 de debilitated by this whole it's program. very it's very it's very Sorry. odd shall we shall we do our best ralph we you could have, you have had the most extraordinary career i mean a, an amazing career but yes you, you, you didn't you didn't start out um as an artist in the conventional way going to art school did you no i didn't at all i um I, want, I actually, all I did when I was a kid was build model airplanes. Right. And what I wanted to do when I, when I grew up was to make air, real airplanes. You know, that was, that was my idea of things. And, is that, and why, so, is that why you went to de Havilland? Yes. I went there as an apprentice and uh, I was going to do five years but I, I, I stood it for, for nine months and I had to leave because I couldn't stand factory life. Right. And was that, were you in Hatfield? Uh, no, no, it was in uh, near Chester, Broughton, Chester. Right. And uh, that was a small, well, it was a smaller one. It wasn't the main Hatfield, uh, uh, de Havilland, because I didn't live anywhere near there. We lived near, in Wales, you know. And so Chester down the road was the nearest, and I could get home at weekends and, and that sort of thing. I've still got an aeroplane hanging out the back of the studio that I never flew, actually, the one I built. <laughs> you were in, but, uh, weren't you in radar? Were you in, I was in the, when I did my national service, I was in the RAF. And uh, that's what I became a radar operator. Yeah. Right. So what I always think that's where I learned to to watch television. Yes. <laughs> and, and then you and then you saw an advert that perhaps changed. Yeah. So yeah, well, I saw an advert when I was doing uh, my national service. Is that uh, that that was coming up. So I, I saw an advert and it said, you too can learn to draw and earn pounds. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I, I actually went to see, it was Percy V. Bradshaw Press Art School course in Forest Hill. And I, I uh, went to meet the man himself, you know, went to visit him and I said, the only thing I feel about your, your, um, it's very good as a, as a course, but it's very old fashioned. <laughs> how, how old were you when you told him that? 18. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure he was well pleased. <laughs> well, he said, ah, yes, my boy, but the the principles of drawing never change because he was right about that too you know so uh, i said I, I understand yeah yeah but he got he he got uh, the help of giles right illingworth um crook who, who was it the other one um worked for the express uh, Anyway, there, there were six different uh, different um, cartoonists. Oh, and Vicky was one too. Right. Remember Vicky? Yes. And uh, they were uh, they were all there. They were giving their support to get this course going. You know. And so you, that's where I started. And did you know when I met? Hmm? Did you know that you could draw? Well, I couldn't draw then, really. I I learned to draw by um, drawing 
people in pubs for pints. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh look oh this is one of my earliest course, very early cartoon it's called star new standard do you remember they used to say that? star new standard absolutely yeah, i remember that oh that's fantastic 1958 east london yes um, so I was, I just I just thought Giles was the the master of everything, you know. Yeah. And I thought that in fact I've I've done some Giles cart cartoons, you know. Grandma and all that. What's that? Sorry. What, it's all right. It's what, did, you do parrot, did you do parodies of Giles? I did do, and I, I drew the whole family, you know. Of the grandma and the and the, oh god, I do you know I forget I forget who they were now. Uh, and I went went to um, when Vicky Vicky they gave him a celebratory after fifty or sixty years working uh, a sort of a meet Vicky party, you know. Yes. And I went along to it, and that's where I was just going, and then somebody rushed up to me, and it was Gerald Scarf. Wow. And, uh, he said, oh, I'd like your line. Could I come and see you? <laughs> Which he did. And he had a little, uh, one of those little um, sports cars, what well, uh, um, what was I can't it? Remember the name? Was it a Morgan hmm? or something? Was it a Morgan? Not a Morgan. No, a Morgan. No, Austin, Austin. No, it was a, a little, little, tiny little thing, you know. Because I remember at the time I bought a fantastic uh, MG. Right. A, 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 works, a works team car. There were only four of them made. Gosh. And I bought it for thirty pounds at the time, and uh, it was one that didn't have the you know the uh, mud guard like that, but it just had the the cover you know like a yes. rounded one like that, a very sort of uh, basic style. It was a lovely car. Um, where where was your first where was your first cartoon published? Do you remember? The Manchester Evening Chronicle. Right. Nineteen nineteen fifty. Was it nineteen fifty four? And it was a picture of nineteen fifty six. It would have been. I think it was it was it was a picture of a. Oh, there it is. Oh, my goodness. This one here, like Giles. That's but... wonderful service. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is NASA Uzi. <laughs> Nine fifty six. that would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, July 56. Yes, and I very much liked... Uh, and that's how I used to do my name, Stead. Right. Stead. My mother said... But but your your name Stedman, are you ashamed of it? So no no it's just that that's how it what? Oh yeah, that's how I used to do it. Right. I see. Yeah. And and then uh, I had to add that's why I half heartedly put the M A N on the end. Right. <laughs> And it's and it Captain, stayed like that. It stayed like that, yeah. My mother said, "No, no, your name's Stedman. You can't call yourself Stead." You know, it's funny. And you listen to, well, you listen to your mother. You know, I did. And then you did a bit of formal education in art. I did what? You did some formal education. Was that East East Ham? Technical college. Tech college, yes. And then I 
I went to um, uh, I went to East yes East Ham Tech College. They had an art department there, and they had a, a model, employer model, you know. Right. And one, there was one model called Stella. <laughs> Stop. I have a break. You know. Was, was she Stella? Light up, light. Absolutely stark, Stella. <laughs> <laughs> she, you tell them looking around your drawings like this with a fag in her hand, you know, like, <laughs> And so it was just so peculiar, somehow. And which is this one? Just that might be Stella. Yeah. You've got amazing background service there, Ralph. I have, haven't I? Absolutely it's, fantastic. They're, they're, they come, the three <laughs> completely. Yeah, just, just to show that we really are doing this off the cuff and live, and neither of us have got any <laughs> idea which way it's going. I've just been handed a bit of paper that says, Paul Palowski says, thank you to Ralph for sending him a letter. Do you remember a Paul Palowski? Because he, he obviously remembers you. I don't remember him. Well, but if I met him, see his face, I'd probably know who ah, him. Well, he's had his oh, name yeah. mentioned on air, so. What's that? Uh, anyway. Uh, and then did the, did the big break come with Punch accepting one of your cartoons? I was sending week after week after week, and they were sending things back. Sorry, not quite. Sorry, not quite. Sorry, not quite. And then they started putting, putting uh, over the over the sort of uh, over his signature. Um, you know, Hewison was the man who was in charge of Punch right at the time, trying to get one in Punch, and. Uh, he would send back a rejection slip with an arrow going over the top of, you know, missing. <laughs> I looked. Oh, is this, this is, is this a rejected one? No, this, this one have been, would have been taken. Punch, I was trying to do punch covers, you know. Oh, yes. Because in, in a way, as as a, I, I don't think I ever told you this, but um, before I was able to collect paintings and do yeah. paintings, I, I bought cartoons and I have an enormous collection of cartoons. And of course, Punch in a way was the place, wasn't it? Oh, it was, yeah. For, for over, and over a, a very proper, it was a, it was a place for proper cartoons, you yes. know, the people that, work for it on a, on a regular basis yes. i eventually became on i got the, on the round table you know they have a round table they called it for the for the you know not a monthly thing but every three months or something every six months it was a it was a sort of for acknowledging the fact that you work for punch now and that you can go to the meetings and so forth, and maybe look at some of the cartoons that are being submitted, and, and sort of help to select and them. Did they did they pay reasonably well or not? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think it was more a more um, for the honour of you know getting yeah. stuff. You got the paid, but it would be like ten guineas or something. Uh, in guineas, you know, I suppose. <laughs> Probably seven guineas, I don't know. Or if and you then, got a, on a cover, a cover, it was about ten guineas, I think. And then you got um, Private Eye, didn't you? Private Eye came along, yes. Is that with, with, is that with Richard Ingrams? Yes. And uh, he started the, the oldie as well, didn't he, Richard yes, Ingrams? Did. Did you do did you do work for the oldie as well? No, I never did work for the oldie. I was getting too old by then. 
<laughs> no, it just didn't didn't really didn't appeal to me as much. Although I saw recently a t- Tony Rushton who worked for the pr- Private Eye. Yes. Because I I actually said we should go. To, this was after the punch thing had started, and I'd met Gerald Scar, you know. And he, he then Private Eye started, and he um. I said, uh, uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm staying with Punch, you know. Said Jay, you know. I said, oh no, I think we should go along and see, see what they're like, you know. So introduce ourselves, and uh, we did. But I, 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 I said, okay, I won't submit anything to it. And two weeks after, after that. Jenny Scarf had a picture in there. So oh, very nice. He was, <laughs> you know, it was really too much in a way. Yes. Uh, that was the way that went, actually, our friendship, peculiar friendship. That. Yes. Short-lived. And, uh, hmm? Short-lived. Well, short, yes, it was peculiar. It was, it was this thing about the line, you know, I'd like your line, and... He really, I don't know, he just changed. I, I, I just thought I was seeing my own drawings in the oh. paper. <laughs> that was a bit funny. And, and, and then, then, his, and then, then he, he changed a little more. more um, I think he became more um, uh, stretched and exotic, if you like. Yes. Yeah. And then you added book illustration. Yes. Was it um, was um, it Alice in Wonderland that you started with? Um, I th- well, th- let me see. Was that the first one? It was the first one actually, because I'd done the first, but then the second was through the looking glass, and then I had to do that as well to, to carry on the whole thing, you know. And then after that, um, I decided I can't stop now, having started a series like this. So I must look into the life of Sigmund Freud and see what he was doing. And I went to meet the, the, uh, I can't remember his name now. He was a, it, it was in the ninth district of Vienna, and I had to. Um, you went to Vienna for that. But I went over there. Yes, but I went over there. Um, uh, it was Vienna. Yeah, no, wait a minute. No. That's the ninth district of Vienna, and and Freud lived there. Had lived there until 1939, and um, I was kind of keen to get as much of the facts as I could. And I went there to his house in the Ninth District, and I met the uh, his name again. I forget. I know it'll be there somewhere. Oh, there we are. That's the wallpaper is still on the walls. In the original consulting room. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. And this is 1978. Right. I did this. And uh, um, I, yeah, I was kind of fascinated by the whole progress of his his career and I got even went to the barbers in Vienna itself and to see where he'd had his hair cut incredible and is, you know is it true that you actually lay on the floor where the couch was and looked up to yeah, try and feel right. what, what people so would... that I could so that I could photograph exactly that picture that where what it would look like on the, more or less on the couch you know so that it was, uh, it was what I was. Uh, I was intent on 
on trying to really bring him to life, you know, somehow. Yes. I, I think, um, you know, I think in a, um, a strange way, it's one of the things that marks you out so strongly from your fellows is hmm. most of them, I have the feeling, sit at home doing their drawings. And yes. you, you have followed your instinct to go all over the world, almost at a whim, to, yes. to really experience properly so many things. Well, that's how I met Hunter, Hunter Thompson, you know, was yes. going to America. On, why, did you on, go, on, why, why did you go to the States? Do you remember? I was, what, what I'd never you? been. And I, um, it was, a, it was a, a, a man called, oh, wait a minute, Z Zim. Uh, anyway, he said he was in private eye. And I was there, and he said, "Why don't you come to America? You can stay with me and Pam, Pam, and you know, uh, we're we're getting married, Pam and I. Mean, he's, you're welcome to stay with us, and you could come to stay with us in in Rhode Island. Yes, and then you could go into America, into New York when you're ready, you know. So uh, uh, I did stay with them, and." Um, I uh, uh, I got a call one day from from a magazine called Scanlands, which is the name of a little known Nottingham pig farmer. <laughs> and they'd call the making, magazine Scanlands. Are you making that up, or is that really true? No, that's absolutely true. The the magazine was called Scanlands, right? Uh, after this pig farmer, right? And they had two, two, uh, they, 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 they managed to get uh, Don Goddard, who had been a foreign editor of the New York Times, they'd managed to get him to be the editor of this new magazine. So uh, I, um, it's very, very, uh, such a gentleman he was, you know, it was a, uh, really extraordinary. His, and his wife worked for Revlon, uh, Natalie Goddard. And um, they were sweet. I mean, he was such a gentleman of a, a man, you know, right, nice man. And um, he'd found, he'd heard about my work, in England, but he, you know, he'd gone to work for the Scanlons magazine in America. And I was run up one day by uh, JC, JC Suarez, that's right, JC Suarez, who was from Brooklyn. And he said, you know, and he's trying to talk to a yard like this, you know, or that. You're asking, yes, haven't you? Well, uh, how delighted to go to Kentucky and meet an excellent Hell's Angel who just shaved his head. <laughs> so, and it was Hunter Thompson, you see, who, when, when I did go to meet him in Kentucky, uh, we were looking for each other for a couple of days, you know, was wandering around. Uh, asking that, and they said, "Well, you wouldn't miss him when you see, because I had a little goatee beard then." Right. And uh, and in in Kentucky, nobody had hair on the face. You know, this at that time. Right. Now, now it's nowhere, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and did, did you get did you get on with him immediately or not? Well, I when I. Was, I turned around and uh, somebody said, excuse me. So I said, I, said, um, I turned around uh, and I looked up like this, it's six foot, nearly six foot six, you know, fella up there. This is, head was shaved. And uh, he said, my God, they said you were weird, <laughs> but not that weird. <laughs> and then, and then he, he said, are you some 
kind of matted haired geek with string warts. <laughs> Whatever they are. Have you ever seen a matted haired geek no. with string warts? No. <laughs> well, about me thought I was one. But this, that's the thing that with Hunter, we came, we were like chalk and cheese, they're so different. But is that why you we got that? on? I think so, yeah. I think that was the whole idea of it, really. Um, I mean, oh, there we are, there it is. Oh, that's 2005. That's he just because he did say to me, I feel, I feel real trapped in this life role if I didn't know. I could commit suicide at any moment. And he had 23 fully loaded guns at Owl Farm. Really? I, went with, I went with him to an a, a, a estate agent that he was looking for a house, you know, to buy. And this thing came on the market, Owl Farm, you know, uh -huh. which he bought for with with 23 acres you know and he bought it and then he, he was really already knew what he wanted to do with it you know he found when he saw a picture of it and uh i think it cost him ten thousand dollars right <laughs> our farm it's incredible uh but um it was interesting going with him there and uh I'm trying to remember how, I think he was a little alarmed, the um, estate agent, at what Hunter looked like, you know, and how he, how he was. And, and, um, and he says, I, I want to have, have a builder, a gonzo fist, <laughs> you know. And I'd, and I'd try to draw it, and Hunter said, Two thumbs, Ralph, two thumbs. So that's the thumb as well as that one. That's what I didn't realize at the time. So it's like that, you know, and two thumbs coming around. Is, so, uh, is that where the gonzo came from? Well, he didn't know. He'd never heard the word before. There was right. a, this, this man from, from Sol, uh, Sosalito, uh -huh. just across the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, who had said when he first saw our first article together in Scanlon's, said, hey, man, this, this is pure gonzo. Uh, um, neither of us had heard the name before, and the hunter hadn't heard the name. Is it gonzo? What the fuck's gonzo? Yeah. So... So I said, I don't know, but we eventually found out it's Portuguese right. and it's and it means hinge, right? And I assumed because that's I never really discussed this with him. This is when he, he really he shot himself. But I found out what gonzo meant because it mean it's a Portuguese word that means. Hinged, so I assumed it was unhinged, you know, it was that kind of thing. That's so all the only explanation I can make for its uh, existence, really. Was the, was the first major thing you did, Fear and Loathing? Was that the first major uh, thing you did with him? Yes. He, went, he, he started uh, working with... Um, uh, oh God, name of the two people. Uh, the, I can't remember the name of the, the, the book with, oh God. The book for Fear and Loathing was, it was this uh, Portuguese, this Oscar. Oscar, Oscar Acosta. Oscar Acosta, that's right. And there was another one too. Um, uh, Some other, some some man that had lost his life somewhere, and he he was he was a second. The he also became part of the book that Hunter wrote. This fear and loathing in Las Vegas, a savage journey to the heart of the American dream. That was the whole idea. And Oscar Acosta was the. I've got drawings of them, you know, and, and but they're on the well, they're on the. Uh, 
on the on my computer somewhere. Yeah. Um, Somebody's just passed. I, me, somebody's just passed me a question, Ralph. A John Wilson um, writes in. What does Ralph think of the film adaptation of Fear and Lo Loathing? Uh, well, Johnny Depp. Who did? You're talking about the one with Johnny Depp in it. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, as he went to live with uh, Johnny downstairs, he lived in the basement of Hal Farm for six months or something while he observed uh, right. Hunter going about his thing. But he never quite got the the um, voice for it, you know. The voice for it is very tight, and, you know, but, but the fuck says, you know, you know, it's, you know, it's, Hey, Rob. And the way he said Rob, Rob, was a, always a snap, you know, in it. And I'm not sure that he, he got it quite right somehow. Um, it, uh, not that I'm complaining at, uh, or criticizing Johnny, but because he's been here too, you know. I see. Yeah, it's uh, he's a lovely guy, you know. I think we have a. I think we had a. Uh, they showed me a picture that we had somewhere of you and Johnny Tep Depp together. I don't know whether we can oh, find yeah. that. Yeah, I don't know. We probably find I find things with him. And uh, at the moment, what's I'm not sure what he's uh, he's up to. Though he's been working with, he had a. He had a. I used to always get in touch with his. Um, let's see if I remember that in a minute. Stephen Deuter. What was his name? Stephen Deuter. Stephen Deuter. That's right. And Stephen Deuter was his right hand man, you know, and well, is his right hand man, and I was right. I always used to get in touch with Stephen before speaking to Johnny because I felt it was a bit of an intrusion, to, you know, to to sort of speak directly to Johnny as though I was trying to just get to know him. But I did get to know him, but it was better to do it this way around because Stephen Deuter was his, um, well, his, his business companion or business associate, you know, and he'd known him for a long time, I suppose. Um, was it true that you and Hunter went to the Rumble in the Jungle? That, uh, yes. Yeah, it was a complete about, washout. About that. Well, the thing about that was, I went to meet him, and, and I was late getting there. And Hunter, Hunter was, I was about checking in to the hotel in. Um, I think, oh God, the name of the place. Uh, what was the name of it, Dan? This is what happens to you. you get, are they drawings from? Oh, Kinshasa. And the, and the hotel was one of the newer hotels. And uh, that's the kind of thing I, that's when I arrived. Welcome to Kinshasa. 24th of the 10th, 74. Uh, and then I think Hunter was a little bit, uh, he used to, he said, I, I'd love to hire that. There was an airplane went across. And he said, I'd like to, I, I'd like to hire that thing, bro. I said, <laughs> um, I said what did he say? It was almost like fuck the blacks, you know. <laughs> well, he was from yeah, Kentucky, you know. I don't, I don't know. And that was my drawing of him having a swim, grass in the pool, 5:30 a.m. Yeah, the Intercontinental was. The, uh, yes, the Intercontinental was the hotel, and. Uh, I think sometimes I also thought Hunter did say some racial things, you know, because it was it was just. And the other thing he did, 
was he gave our tickets away. <laughs> he gave them away or he sold them? I, I don't know. Because he was always having people knocking on his door, his hotel door. And, I mean, breakfast for, for him st started with six Bloody Marys, you know, on a, on a tray brought, brought, brought to his door, you know. And um, was a, this, I don't know. I see you come, come in to breakfast, uh, Hunter. Oh, fuck up here. How can I say? He's more interested in his Bloody Marys in there. Someone, someone, someone just written in to ask whether he ever let you blow something up. Blow something up. Whether, whether, um, whether Hunter ever, whether you ever blew something up with him. Oh, he's always trying to blow things up. I mean, he, he want, was one thing he wanted to do was to uh, shoot, shoot uh, some of my work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he did that with um, did that with a few things. We, we got him so that he could. I would draw something and he shoot it. You know, it was a, it was a in a funny th a funny sort of way. It happened so long ago now that I have forgotten some of the detail. You know that it would people could only remind me of it. You know, yes. like I, yes. how it is. So were you were you, um, but, hmm? were you surprised when he killed himself? No, I knew he was going to do that. He said I'd real feel I'd feel real trapped in this life, Ralph, if I didn't if I didn't know I could commit suicide anymore. And that's what he did. But, but he saying, promised. Really? Saying it. Yes, yeah, said it. Saying yeah. it is one thing, but actually doing it is another. I thought, I did. I didn't think he meant it, really, but right. um, but he did. And uh, his um, son, Juan, and Jennifer, the wife, were in, in the next room. Oh, my goodness. From the kitchen, you know. From the, and the bullet hole is still in the top of the... Wow. The cooker hood, you know. So uh, it was, in fact, a rather tragic. I don't know. I, I thought, no, he wouldn't do it in the end, but he, 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 was, he seemed determined to do it, unless he was actually thinking of people that he admired. You know, had done that sort of thing, and yes. Uh, so he was going to do it himself. Right. Can we go back? Can we go back a couple of steps? Because back, I think it was in the eighties. You you had more than a flirtation with the the wine trade, didn't you? And beer. And oh, he said. Oh, yes, the silly little grapes. Is it? Stupid <laughs> little grapes. Uh, they, I work for Oddbins. Right, I went. I went all over the world, you know. For Did you? Oh, you? You travelled to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then I also went to uh, the Isle of where was it? Um, uh, the one with seven distilleries in it, uh, up in Scotland. Uh, oh, was that uh, Isla? Isla. Yes, that's it. And yeah, you, I I happen to know that you made the most extraordinary mural for them, for Odd Bins. I did. Yeah, you did. Let's see if I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's odd that because there was also oh, that's uh, the great wine stuff. He gave. He's uh, that's Hal. He just died. You know. Right. Hal's just. Unfortunately, a very sad thing happened two, two or three weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I think he was still drinking. Yeah. He'd given up, you know. And uh, he became a good friend. And it's so sad about all that. 
Will you, will you tell me something about that mural? Because it is extraordinary. It's it's something like 48 feet long. Remember it? Did 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 it? I think we might have just shown one. I know about this, Ralph, because I bought it. Oh, have you? I have, yes. I've forgotten what it is. I'm currently the proud owner of this enormous mural. <laughs> and I think it went, when Elbins, Elbins went uh, into receivership, and I bought it, it from the... someone who bought it from them. Oh. And it's the most extraordinary mural. Good Lord, and I've forgotten entirely about it, you know. I'm sure it's somewhere, if I look through books of God, yes. um, I may find it. I've now been looking around for, um, in, in, in a book of Victorian, Victorian drawings and, you know, from me medical books, trying to find what might be a cure for coronavirus. Right. I don't know, because I, I got a hunch it's probably been thought of as a, an anti, uh, you know, a, a, dis, a, a, a strange, I don't say, designed for something else, you know, or came out at the time, towards the end of the last century, or rather the 19th century, when they were they were playing around with all these possible cures for God knows what. Because I was just reading a book about um, the Northwest Passage, right. about the um, way they're, they're looking for the way through an Antarctica, you know, to see if they can find the Northwest Passage. There was a film made about that. And I think someone like Spencer Tracy was in it. Yes. Some, um, Ralph, someone's just passed me another question. Um, someone called Fred. Um, and I think it was sparked off by your talking about um, Hunter shooting your work. And he said, did William Burroughs also shoot your work? No, he shot a portrait of Hunter. <laughs> did he? Well, I think that, yeah. <laughs> and he had a little six shooter gun like that, you see. So, did, did you and meet? I said, Well, there are three places, there are three places on that portrait that you can shoot, William. <laughs> One of them is his wristwatch, and another one was um, uh, his sheriff's badge. And the third one was between the eyes. Wow. Six went off like that. <laughs> and, I said, and he completely, you know, I said, I think you missed William. He said, well, he's dead, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> did, you meet, did you meet most of these countercultural Americans? Uh, and Alan Ginsberg, and they used to come into my friend Bernard Stone's bookshop in London. Oh yes, that was the that was a sort of waterhole, you know, for the they obviously make make for his shop. It was an anti antiquarian bookshop, yes. and all the all of these people would turn up there and. Um, Poets and writers, and and then there was a Casey and Ellen. That's right, Casey and Ellen. He was an he was an an American. He and his wife, and they're dead now. Excuse my, son. but um, she used to work for Bernard. Bernard Stone ran the bookshop, you know. And uh, he. Um, I don't know, everybody came, I'm trying to, Ferlinghetti, you heard of Ferlinghetti? Uh, yes. Yes, oh good, uh, well, he used like, to come I, in. 
I, mm -hmm. I also worked with Ginsburg right at the end of his life. Did you? Oh, yeah. That's it. Oh, I lovely. did, yes. Yeah. Extraordinary. Great. Yeah. So the, 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 it was a strange period, but interesting. And then Bernard got sick and then he was okay again. And he was all right for kind of a few years after that. And then suddenly one day it was just, he was over. I don't know. It's a strange life. That. Will, you, will you tell me something about working with um, my friend Kerry, Kerry Levy? Uh, I don't know anything about him. Do you not? <laughs> no. He's not altogether sure either. <laughs> no, he's a funny man. He talk, he, uh, Sadie speaks to him more than I do. You know, she, he's... But we've done... He just ran, ran me out of the blue one day. And, oh, beginning of the, the, the noughties, yeah. you know. And... Uh, he got in touch and said, could you do some drawings for birds for me? And I, I'd done about, oh, 90 by the end of the week, you know, wow. 90 drawings of the birds. And I had never really thought of doing it before, you know, but I sort of did that. And he was quite surprised, but we did, we did get on quite well and do, quite a lot of things together. And uh, I don't, oh, here we are. Oh, these are the spotted ass trouser beat. <laughs> a striped wally bird. Oh, that's this way, I think. A green peak slope stepper. And the uh, orange beak blind spotted yellow tipped white tail. <laughs> Excuse me, that's minor bird. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done three books so far. With um, with Kerry, haven't you? That's a uh, <laughs> I'd forgotten all a bit. I'd forgotten I'd done these. Sadie knows more about my work yeah. than I do. And you've done you've done three <laughs> books with, with Kerry now. Yeah, three wonderful books. I think that's it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably do one more. I right. don't know about. And that's, right. that, that's indeed how we met, because we were um, lucky enough to be able to do the printing for you. That's right, yeah. And then we did a sort of a, a talk at the, the gallery, remember? Yeah. A sort of, I with, think... With, with that other little chap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear, I don't know. It... It's uh Can you talk one, a little bit about hmm? no, I I, I, I was gonna say uh I was gonna say my usual poem but I won't one day in last September. Go on, as then. far as I remember I was walking down the street with manly pride. My heart was all a flutter when I fell into the gutter when I found a pig lying by my side. My heart was all a flutter as I lay there in the gutter, and a lady passing by was heard to say, You can tell the man who woozes by the company he chooses. And the blooming pig got up and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful, Ralph. That's wonderful. I, I, it's difficult to know how to say this, but um, as a lover of art and cartoons and book illustration yeah i can't think of i think of the great of the great heritage of um hogarth and gilray oh they're wonderful i was uh, absolutely i did pastiches of them i felt yeah. so 
but for my mm. money, Ralph, you're up there with them. Um, oh, no. Just, just uh, an extraordinary career. And I can't think of anyone who has actually also um, bridged the world in the way that you have. You know, to have built a remarkable reputation in America as well as in the UK, just fantastic. Well, that, was, that was meeting Hunter, who's the American bit, you know. Yeah, but you went there in the first place, otherwise it wouldn't have happened. No, it wouldn't, really. It was this guy, though, that um, Jan and Pam and the guy, his her husband, um, who were getting married and they invited me to stay with them. That was it. Yes. And that was where that started, and Rhode Island, you know. And and when I first, I remember when I first saw the thing, uh, walk, don't walk. Remember that? You know that thing on the head of the, uh, as you cross the road, the crossings, when it says, walk, don't walk. Yes. And I, and I did one, don't. Yeah. <laughs> what? I've just had a, um, I, I'm, I can hardly move for questions that have been sent in, but this one's just come from um, an old friend of mine called Chris Elands, a wonderful chap from, uh, who I've dealt, worked with for years, yeah. um, in, uh, who lives in uh, Edinburgh. And yeah. he, says, I, I've, he says, I've long admired Stedman's work and his eviscerating visual political commentary. Can I ask how he might approach a presidential portrait of the and he writes corrupt twisted liar trump i have done one of him and i've done one called the um statue of liberty takers <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's trump and he's got a he's got a, a woman hanging over his arm you know and he's got a flag in the air and he's waving it like this you, ha you haven't got that handy have you have we got that handy say Sadie! I think they've, they've disappeared. Really, it's oh, you've got, oh, uh, yes, yeah, one from, is that the uh, Trump ones? Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's <laughs> fantastic. And <laughs> I did, I did a triple stilt skin. <laughs> Time to wind it up. That's fantastic. So that, that you've got that down. You got Ralph. That's a devil driver. <laughs> Time to wind it up. Time well, to wind it up. Our half our half hour is now nearer an hour than than. Oh hour. dear, I'm sorry. Um, oh. No, listen, I'm absolutely delighted. It's been wonderful I'm, chatting I'm with you. See, great, and um, uh, yeah. it was. And I've been looking through the different people in your, your you do this nice quarterly oh, yes. brochure type thing. Yes. And that's nice to look through. I like it. It's very kind of you. That is nice. Kind of you. So I'm happy to meet you anyway, and I uh, hope Thank we meet you, again Ralph. not so long. Yeah, many, yeah. Thank, many thanks indeed. I try and think of something that's got to be printed. Right. Okay, he's, we'll do, we'll he's do the that best again. Print, and he's the best printer in Europe. I say you're, Europe, you know. You're, you're very, you're very kind, and and Sadie, thank you, and and your team there for all the help that you've given us. And Bye. love to everyone there. Bless you. Many thanks. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 It's, hard, it's one third full size, Leonardo da Vinci. The last supper, which took me about six months. If he ever sold the place, what I'd do is cover the walls in the worst wallpaper you can ever think of. And then so people come first and say, oh, I've got, got to move that, that wallpaper, get that off the wall as soon as possible, and do that. And suddenly come across this and say, I didn't know Leonardo had been to Maidstone. <laughs> Conservationist duo Ralph Stedman and Kerry Levy have teamed up with the Goldmark Gallery in Uppingham to produce a limited edition set of 10 prints focusing on extinct and endangered animals.
Each stunning print in the 50 Strong Edition features one of Stedman's captivating animals or boids, accompanied by Levy's subtly imprinted words, which encapsulate the species' plight and will raise funds for species protector WildAid. This project, this is about... We couldn't stop doing the birds that were endangered. There's so many of them and so many kids throwing stones at little birds that we decided we've got to stop these little boys throwing stones at little birds. And he, he sort of came up with something far more sort of scientific. I think it's quite an incredible creature that the dodo is the it's symbol of everything we've lost, isn't yeah. it? Because it is more about the overall effect that we are having on the world being told through these pictures and yeah. hopefully make people go, I had no idea. So this is the vaquita. There's only 60 left in the world about a year or so ago, and it's already halved. Yeah. This looks as though this may be the first major extinction of the 21st yeah. century. Do they really have teeth like that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, it may be a bit of artistic licence. Presented in a specially crafted handmade box, the creation of the Gonservation Suite is part of a worldwide campaign, which includes global urban fashion brand Vans Footwear and the famed American brewery Flying Dog, with Daily Show host Trevor Noah hosting the New York launch party. Conservation is all about compassion and showing compassion to creatures and wildlife. No, it's an opportunity for me to draw silly pictures. And these now have, have been down to Ralph and you've approved them straight away and loved them. I think they found all these sort of areas oh, yeah. really hard to get the depth of them. How they did them. No, know. it is a feat of printing science, I There's think. There's no feet in it, I can't see any feet anywhere. There. Oh, there's foot. There's, yeah. there's no, there's claws. I've got no choice. Look, okay, Kerry. He says you can do this now, and you better not try to get out of it. He's one of the cruel, endangered species. And he's in danger because I'll, I'll hit him one day. Hard. <laughs> With a mallet. We got a piece in one of the BBC Wildlife magazine, and they were just going to print, and I got a a, a panicky phone call from the editor who said, oh my God, we've just noticed there's a blue slut. We, c we can't have a blue slut on the BBC Wildlife ah. magazine. What, what do you mean? Ah, it's a funny. bird. It's a, yes, but it's, it's a blue slut. educate, entertain our customers. OK, so now we're going to look at some other of his prints. We're thinking very seriously about stopping making pots. It was nothing forced. And I think his jugs are, are really the epitome of that. Hello, welcome to today's broadcast from the Goldmark Gallery. One of my most regular places to visit up in this part of the world is the Goldmark Gallery. Mm -hmm. 